Sorry for the delay. Uh, so, delay. So today we're going to to talk about how to collect data. So you will get access to all the data you want to work with. Um, so just first, we can, we wanted um, to show again the symmetry that we have been talking through the first lecture. So in this case, we're putting. Um, we're going to talk about data and information, but we have on the, day, on the side of the data, we have the map, the machine intelligence that is objective, that it works with numbers, um, that's, that works with arithmetics, and it's, it's like a, glo a local globality. And then on the other side, um, it's about information. That is uh, when you make, make a model, when you use the human intelligence, it is a, this personal, this intention, that works with characters, with geometry, and is a global locality. And we want to just to go through a few slides just to remind you what we've been talking since the beginning. So um, we're saying that we feel like we're in the flood. Everything is there. We have the Internet of Things. We have big data, social media, the sensor deployment. So now we could get data from everywhere. We could say that the so we, we were talking about this, that we can get um, any data we want. Yeah. So when we can get anything that we want, and in, the format, in any format that we, of course, we want, then we feel like we are being flawed with the data. So how can we actually make sense of, of this list of, one, of ones and zeros? To actually make a, to have a meaning or to actually ask a right question on, on how to get what we call information. So of course, what is information? And we were we were telling you that this is when we actually decide to to make a stance. So when we actually are asking questions to the abundance of data. And uh, for example, in quantum physics, they refer to a system that um, is um, in entropy when it has full symmetry. So when it has all, and when, when it is a, st a static uh, system, that you cannot get uh, anything from that. So when full symmetry, it's zero information. There is when it comes information. And when you have full information, you have zero symmetry. So we would like to just uh, stick with this concept by saying that information shouldn't have symmetry, should come from this static system that we call the big data or the big plenty, and by disrupting or just breaking the symmetry, we get information. So if we go into the etymology of this word, um, information comes from informare, which is to give form to. So it, it goes into what we are telling you about uh, making a stance or talking about the, uh, deciding what, what to see through this whole data. Um, and then, of course, when nothing makes sense, this is when we say that we articulate the meaning. This is to ask the questions. No question is right or wrong. It's just a question and the way you um, formulate it or the way you want to play with, with this question is um, by telling stories around. So it's never, it's never fully, um, so as I said, right or complete, but it should be uh, co coherent on the way you're telling the story. So in order to, 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 uh, to answer these questions or to start the projects that you were thinking through this whole uh, weekend, we are going to get first the data for the projects, and uh, of course, this is um, by in, by introducing you. Uh, what well, is an, this, for example uh, to get to get data from these uh, big platforms? You no. need to get a key, which is called the API, and this API, what it does, it goes um, so it get, gives you access to the data set of this platform, and you send a request. And this is kind of the waitress that takes, like if you're in a restaurant, you know what to order. So the waitress is this API key. It goes to the kitchen and it tells what you want, and then it came with your food. So it's like that. So this API key is kind of the transporter that goes with your message to the data set and then goes back with your answer. And through all examples, we're, go we're going to today uh, review examples of how to get data from Google Maps, from Google Street View, from uh, Open Street Maps, and from social media, Twitter, yeah. Instagram, and uh, Facebook. And it's in the same way. So you first need to get access of this API, which is the key. And then this key allows you to access this data. OK, so as I said, this is um, what is it's called 
it's an application programming interface. So as I explained you a little bit, it's kind of the messenger that takes the request and tells the system what to do and then returns a response back to you. So here is just a quick, um, I will show you quickly how this works, but then uh, we will go in more detail with Guo when he will introduce you his crawler of Google Maps and Google Street View. So first of course you, you need to go to Google's Maps, uh, Google's APIs, and in here by pressing get a key, you get the key to access um, to access the Google Google Maps um, yeah. data set. So how how while you have your your API key, what how how can you use it? So for example here, if you if you get your API key, you press it here, and if you run this cell, what you get is a Google um, Street Map tile that corresponds to the geo position of Barcelona. And here is the latitude and the longitude. So what is crawling? Crawling is known to be this bot, this robot, this code, this algorithm that systematically browses um, what, I, what is written here, the World Wide Web. But it was known from the beginning when you were, it's actually you do it when you're searching into local files of your computer. But this is more, um, more powerful because it goes through the whole data set of one platform. And then there are, um, for example, what we are going to show you now, this is uh, how to crawl the images from any web page. By first, um, how, how to check the structure of, the, of this web page is you, you copy here the link, as you see, and you ask, no. <laughs> and just the element, right? And it says that this web page contains data, full data, mm -hmm. hyperlinks, image links, images, plain text, source, and you say, okay, so I know I can get all that I'm seeing here, so here uh, I'm interested in images, so I said, okay, in this link, this show me all the images you have, and then here, this is what it retrieves. And as I understood from the structure of this web page, here at the end it says every time I'm changing next, it changed the number of the page. Of the page. Yeah. So this is what I'm saying of understanding the structure of the web page. So if you know how it is changing while you're pressing next, then you know how to access the whole. So here what you, you, what you need to build is a range. So I say in this case I only want to take five pages from this uh, web page. And by accessing like this, I say like now the pages are through one, from one till five, and I put it in this variable, and I go, and it does a loop, and it gets all the images. Like that. So it works with images, it works with text, it works with hyperlinks. You just need to know what, what, you, want, what you want to search. And the way that this code is written, every, every time you see a red, um, cell means this is the one that exports these images to your local file. So how you have to run it is by going each cell, each blue cell, running each blue cell in order, in order and then export it with the red one. So that's how you get the, the data that you, that you crawl at that time. So this, for example, if you want to get the images from Instagram, it's a little bit more complicated because since there's been this uh, privacy policy, policy. The, IP, uh, the API key for all the social medias were restricted. So there is no more API key for you to get this data. So how we do it in this case, um, we have um, Mathematica and Twitter has an agreement. They, they share an API. So you get, the service, you get this API by connecting to Twitter from Mathematica. Um, and then in here you say, okay, I will like to get the pictures or the tweets from Zurich using this tag, the lake. And by running this, it goes into the geo position or the, the center of Zurich and finds all the, the tweets that contains that lake. But of course, this, it, these are only text, but you, what you want are the pictures, right? But usually, when you have this account, you could uh, decide, when, when you're posting from Instagram or from Facebook, you decide to share it also with Twitter. 
So these three platforms share the same information. So when you access the text, you could access already the picture because it's always sharing um, the, uh, the link of the picture. And we go into the text, we say, okay, we are going only to take what are the pictures here, and I'm going to find what is a JPEG file. And like that, you could access, this is kind of a postcard of Zurich, like from now, um, what is the people posting about the lake in Zurich? And you could do it the way the way the way it's done here is by deciding one point and um, asking into a radius of four kilometers. So you give a point in the center of the city, in any city you want. You decide the radius you want to search for, and then you get at the end this postcard. You get, of course, the images, but you could render in this way. So it's mm -hmm. kind of a Zurich, uh, Zurich Lake today, now. And you're, you could export, of course, the images. It's by running this line. And of course, you could get the, the text from Twitter also. And again, so you could ask for your API key. So this is the service connect. And what is really nice is that you could um, ask what you could, uh, yeah, check what you could ask to Twitter. So it says you could ask for uh, retweets, um, image tweet, information, followers, friends, and in this case, I'm doing the I'm doing a search. So this is a tweet search around city. So it is giving me all the tweets that contains the word city here. So the Zurich because I defined that city Zurich. And of course, how to get the text is just by saying I want the text from all these data sets, and that's how you get the text. But you cannot only do this search by cities, but by users. But this is interesting because, so if we say there is this, be there is this uh, belief that I am who am I because I have these people who is my f that are my friends, so they are similar to me. So if you think like this, if you, if you search one um, username that you know and you get... Um, for example, all his followers or the people that he's following, you could access also to this, to his, to their data, and it could be interesting also to, to try out this this idea. So how to play with this data? I'm, I'm going fast because this um, will give you kind of a hint what you want to do. So there, there there are plenty plenty of data you can get and plenty of ways by how to get it, and then you just have to think a little bit. So there is also one way to get data from news. So there is by accessing again the Twitter of Reuters and they always share the link of their uh, news. So that like that you could get not only, for example, if you want to get a profile of a certain person or a certain world, you could get all the data you, you can, you, can you, you could collect all the data from social media, the data of uh, the news that you're searching and then you could somehow understand this, this, this profile that you're creating. And of course, you could get data from open street, um, open street maps. Sorry, this is yeah, open street map. So this is more this is more the data we are used to work, right? So there we can say, uh, please, I want to. First, there is this web page that is called Overpass Turbo that we will see it more in detail now. So here you can ask all the roads, and by asking all the roads, you get all the geometry, and the geometry can be uh, as Rendered. assigned or rendered yeah. in any color you want. And of course, you could ask all the buildings, and they, again, uh, render it in any way you want. And by accessing all the buildings, you know this feature, and it gives you already the properties. So it, will, it may give you the height of the building, how many people live there, density. There, there are a lot of uh, data that is embedded in these um, open street maps that you could get access and work with that. And yeah, and so on. So you could get data from natural, um, green areas, natural areas, historical areas, all of these. Um, and again, if you want to render, you could uh, do it in Mathematica. It's just by adding all the layers you collect, so roads, natural buildings, and then you get a map. 
on the model of the city. Okay, so where, what we're going to show you now is um, a crawler that is made only to crawl uh, images from Street View and satellite, uh, satellite pictures. pictures. Yeah. So, um, Uh, I'm not sure if it's gonna work here because satellite crawler with key. Because I just run it on my computer, it works, but on Carlos' computer, it didn't work. So let's hope this time it works, or otherwise I'll switch to a switch to another computer. So yeah, uh, have you already uploaded the file? Not yet. Okay. So. Uh, we will we will like later distrib distribute this file to you so you so all of you can and uh, use it and uh, basically uh, I prepared two files and the uh, color prepared one and uh, which are for uh, satellite pictures street view pictures and pictures from uh, Twitter tweets yeah mm -hmm. and uh, here I'm going to first introduce the uh, Google Map crawler which which downloads uh, satellite pictures automatically um, yeah. I, uh, in this file, I also put some images so that uh, it's like kind of a tutor or introduction that uh, that you can follow. Uh, for example, first, of course, you need to have a Google account. I, I assume everybody has a Google account, right? And uh, if the, you don't, you have to create one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and of course, it's for free. You just apply one, and uh, the key is to you need to start a, a Google. You need to start your uh, Google Cloud project, which uh, which which you first ent enter the uh, Google Cloud platform and uh, uh, agree their agreement, and then start your own project. Uh, yeah, you go to the you go to the uh, main page of of your Google Cloud platform and select, for example, if you wish to create a new project, then click here, then enter the name of the project and that's it. And uh, the other thing you need to do is for your for your project you need to enable the certain API that you'd wish to uh, wish to use. For example, here we are crawling uh, Google's uh, Google satellite pictures so I here I clicked enable APIs and then I type here map in this box and then I find this maps statics API and I go into it and select enable then in this way then you are enable this API for your uh, project and it's, it's similar to do with like other APIs like Google Street View or or I don't know even YouTube uh, caption YouTube videos the uh, Google have lots of APIs and if you are interested you can always check and uh, yeah, the the other key point is uh, for your project you need a uh, you need an API key that that uh, that works as a, a like personal identity of you that, that that in this way that Google know it is you that are using their service not others. So uh, basically, so basically, create a P, uh, create create an API key is very simple. That you simply goes to uh, at from the main page, from the main page here, you go to API and service, and then, and then, you choose credentials, and then you create a new API key. Yeah, you can first check if you already have one. If you don't, then you create one. It's uh, yeah, it's just, just just one click, then you have it. And. Uh, And after after you have both the key and the uh, API available, then you can manage your API through uh, through the through this uh, window as well. That, for example, if you go through, go, if you go to your certain API and click it, then you can see that, for example, for this API, the credential associated to it is this uh, key, and of course, another one called. Uh, uh, user secret. I will introduce it later. So basically, these are all the things that you need to prepare before using this file. And then, 
uh, you copy paste your both your key and your secret into this place. For example, here here's my key and here's my secret. And I always say always say that uh, I need a signature. And uh, before going to the following, I just give you a quick example of. Um, yes, I just give you a quick example of what exactly this thing works. Well, I don't know how to use this here. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Bigger. Can you, can you see this? Okay, so basically, the, for example, in, case, in the case of Google, the API is actually a, a special format uh, URL address that, for example, uh, here the, at the beginning, I cannot select this. Yeah. Here at the beginning is the, so specify what, uh, what kind of service you want, to, you want to need. For example, here it says static map means, means that you want to access the map data from Google and later, and later, here are some parameters that tells you, for example, I want the, the pictures, the center of the pictures located in the, in the city of Brickley, and uh, the zoom level is 14, and I want a size, um, a size a image with the size of 400 by 400 uh, pixels, and then following my key, which is this strange string. And then, for example, if I, okay, this, if I copy paste this, please. If I copy paste this uh, text to my browser, copy. There's some extra space at the beginning. I want to remove them. Yeah. If I copy paste it, then I get uh, images like this. And for example, I can manually change something here. For example, if I say a map type, uh oh, map type equals to sa satellite, then I run it again. It gives me uh, satellite pictures in the, of the same place. And uh, what are, what what kind of parameters uh, are, if are available can be uh, can be seen from the Google's uh, web page. So I just don't introduce too much here. And in in principle, this is how the API works. That you you have a you have a specific format of URL link. You go into this link, and it gives you the server gives you the data you want. Okay. And. Uh, Somatica file. Oh, please. Okay, thanks. And uh, for example, for uh, for the satellite pictures, uh, the first thing the first thing to down before you downloading the pictures, of course, you need to know where to download. And so we call this uh, the point of interest. For example, I want the. Uh, I want the pictures from uh, the city of Zurich. Then, uh, until now, we assume that the, uh, the point of interest are generated by a grid that put on top of the Zurich city. But of course, if you think uh, the other, if, if, of, of course, if you if you have an um, if you want another way of having this point of uh, point of interest, you can also like tell us, and we try to figure it out. For example, here I'm going to show the. Yes, here I'm going to show the uh, downloading images based on this grid. Let's hope this works. For example, I say the city is Zurich, and I want a range of five kilometers, and I want the samples of 10 by 10 grid. Then I execute this. I can generate the grid and uh, visualize it. It looks like this. Yeah. Then the black. I s then the black dots here are the place we are going to collect the images. Then, uh, for the satellite images, another parameter that you need to specify is the 
zooming level that you you wish to work with. For example, in the level of 15, you get a very it's like the, you're standing very far away, and if you are zooming in the level of 21st, then you are actually very, very, very close to the ground. I can make it a little bigger, maybe. Yeah. And here, I choose the level of 18, which is in the middle. And then, basically, that's it. That's all the information you need. and. Uh, for, for this file, and uh, here this line of code simply repeat the, uh, repeat the process that I copy paste my uh, strange URL link to, to, the, to my web browser and collect the image. I, this line of code simply repeat that process automatically and collect all the images. Let's hope this works. Okay, I have to switch. It says success zero, error 100, sorry. And here I just choose one, for example, 100 pictures because it's, it's just for demonstration. And when you are doing your project, maybe you, you need uh, 1,000, 10,000, or 100,000. It, it doesn't matter. It just, it just for example, it, you, change the, uh, you change the range here to maybe a larger range, or, and as well, this sample number here, and then you, you get a higher density of, of the sample point. And of course, you can work on working in different cities, then you get satellite pictures from different cities. For example, here it says finished, success 98, error 2, which is good. And then, where is here? And then the code will automatically create a, file, a folder named Basile here, and all the all the images are clicked, uh, all the images are put it inside. And the file name is named uh, with the latitude, longitude, and uh, its zoom level. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, one last thing to mention that uh, here, the files are the the files are are always like uh, 600 by 600 of pixels, and if you wish to have uh, higher res resolutions, you can also tell us. But uh, I guess you you ju you just cannot have like I don't know 5,000 by 5,000. That's that, 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 that's that's just too crazy. Yeah, and this the uh, first one, and for the for the second one satellite. Street view crawler, yeah. So for the second one, it's basically basically the file is arranged in the same uh, um, structure. That first is the introduction, then you enter your API keys, then the point of interest, then then the crawling process. And uh, for the street view crawling, it's a little bit more complicated because. Uh, uh, it will it will make more sense that you are you are co uh, collecting data based on streets rather than based on the grid, right? So uh, so the only difference here is that in this uh, point of point of interest uh, part that we add another uh, uh, part that you collect data first from OpenStreetMap to determine the to 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 let the, to let this notebook know where are the streets and then. And then it can generate the point of interest based on this street. I will go through this file again, just like just like I did with the other one. And of course, the first thing is always enable your Google account and uh, create a project and enable this time the Street View API that you serve. For example, you type street here, then you have the Street View API and you enable it. And the same is you have an API key and uh, create uh, and a secret. And uh, usually these key and the secret are all the same with for all the uh, projects. So once you have it, you can copy paste to copy paste them to all the uh, crawlers that you you need. Yeah. And uh, yeah, another thing is yeah. For for collecting points of interest, currently the suggest what we are suggesting is that we can do it from this web page called Overpass Turbo Turbo. Turbo. 
dot eu. For example, how this thing works. For example, I enter it, and uh, it it will give a, it will give us a map that uh, that you can you can zoom in or zoom out. For example, here is the city of Rome. Rome. And uh, by zooming in and out, actually you are already selecting the the, the the area that you wish to collect you wish to collect data. For example, I I zoom to zoom into this level. And you can of course in the yeah. left side you can write the city you want to like yeah. besides. For example city. here, I don't know, uh London. I just do it randomly, yeah. Then, for example, here we have we have the city of London. We can zoom in a little bit to to get the area of interest we have. Of course, we can zoom out to make it cover the the entire city. But here, just for demonstration, I would choose a smaller area so that the data can be faster downloaded. Yeah, I choose, for example, this place. And uh, using wizard and search, for example, I search for all the streets. Then I type highway equals to uh, how do you call this symbol? Asterisk. Yeah. Um, one thing is that there, because this what is open to, um, overpass two is doing is getting access to the open, open street, street map. map. Yeah. So if you want to. If you want to get access to the different tags, you just go into tags of OpenStreetMap and then yep. you, you see what you can ask. So yep. you could ask not only roads, but building and then which type of buildings you want to get. Yep. And so all these things, they are already documented in Internet. So if you yep. want to access any point, then just go there and see how to how to ask. Yeah. And for example, here, these are the results that I am asking is all the streets that we see in this area. I can export this result with a geojson format and this is the one that this note that the mathematical notebook are currently supported i save this file to to here i call this yeah export not export maybe london london.json that's it then, then this part has done. That's it. And for example, for this notebook, it's the same. That first, you copy paste your uh, key and the secret here. And then, for example, the one, the file I just downloaded, it, named London. I zoom in a little bit. One hundred. Yeah. Then I type. London.geojson here. These are the these are the file I'm interested in. Then from this file, I extract the uh, the coordinates of all the streets. This may take yeah, that's it. For example, I can visualize this result just to make sure that everything is is correct. It's a little bit slow. Yeah. Looks looks good. Although it's a little bit uh, uh, the the aspect ratio is not correct, but anyway, then <coughs> then here simply it just ex extract the uh, segment uh, street segment from all this network and then use the center point of the segment as the point of interest. And uh, for example, we can also visualize the point of interest. And here the colors are. Here the colors are actually indicating the the direction of the streets because, for example, when we are collecting street view uh, pictures, not just the position is, uh, matters, but also the orientations, right? For example, if you if you want to have the building facade, or if you, if you focus on the cars or, and uh, and the street itself, so here the colors are just indicating the direction of the street, which will be used in the crawling process, and uh, for crawling. Yeah, of course. If you if you wish to uh, work on this uh, crawling process on based on other uh, point of interest that you that, that 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 you want, you can also tell us. But but right now, what we are uh, suggest suggesting is uh, from OpenStreetMap, because then this this is the this is the 
uh, easiest way that you have all the coordinates of street of one city. Yeah, because yeah. Now, when we were starting to create, uh, to, to start, when we start preparing this lecture, we were thinking how to start crawling um, street view, because yep. usually if you do it in a grid, you will, have, you will get a lot of errors because the street, the, the Google cars don't, don't drive through the houses. And then if you have it like this in the streets, then you will not have so much errors, and then you could decide if you would like to have the facades, or yep. if you're exactly as you want to have the, the cars, then, then this makes it easier, and then you, don't ha you have less errors, and you s you're more precise in how you collect your data. Yep. And for example, in Google Maps, you don't have this problem because you just... You have just one view. That you have just one view, and then you just crawl and evenly everything. Right? Yeah. But if you would like to crawl the street views um, specifically in points like, for example, build, uh, commercial buildings. So if there is a picture of this commercial building there, then you just download all the points from op uh, OpenStreetMap from commercial buildings, and then you crawl only the the street views from these points. Yeah. So it just it depends how you want to crawl the data. And then, as the crawling, uh, crawling first, I just give a name for my craw crawling in order to, to, to separate the files I downloaded. Here I say the name is London. And then, uh, and then this code here, uh, this code here is to, to to select the first 100 uh, point of interest to, 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 to make the data smaller so just to, so that we can run the demonstration like very fast because otherwise we have around, I don't know, 10,000 points then it will take a lot of time to collect all the data. And for example, now I take the first 100 and I will run the rest of the code based on these 100 po points. And the first thing is to determine whether there is actually a street view for each of these points. And this line, this line simply goes through all these points and check if there are uh, actually street views. And uh, the result can be also saved. And uh, I suggest that all of us save this result because this, uh, because it, it, it not long, the, because the result not only tells us whether there are uh, there is or not, but also the the precise location of the uh, uh, street view pictures, which may be useful afterwards. For example, when we wish to render something based on these coordinates, and so on. And after this, after this, before before the actual crawling, uh, there are few parameters you may need to specify. For example, the heading. Uh, it's exactly the, the orientation of the cameras. For example, if, you, if you're focusing on the uh, building facade, maybe the, then maybe the angle will be negative 90 degrees or 90 degrees, which means the left and the right of the street. Or if you're focusing on cars, then it will be maybe 0 and 180. Yeah, here I say is negative 90 and 90. And pitch, pitch is the uh, elevation angle of the camera as well. I can I can simply say I want 45 degrees and 0 degrees. 0 degrees means things uh, horizontal, and 45 degrees means, means like this. Yeah. And the last thing is FOV, which means the, uh, the view of angle of the camera, which, uh, which the maximum would be 120. You, uh, if, you, if you think this is not important, you just leave it like this. And the, yeah, the narrow the narrow the angle is the 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 smaller the the area you will show in the picture. Yeah. And after specify all this, then the crawler run on top of this information and collecting data. All these files will be saved in the same folder that you save your code. Yeah. So it will create the folder and then it will save the the, the pictures there. Yeah. And for example, here I should have a folder called London, and here are the all street view pictures I collected. For example, this one are uh, at the this one. This one is at a uh, zero angle of pitch. P yeah. Oh, come on. It's not working. 
and this one is like 45 degrees of up. Yeah. And this one is the other side of the previous one. And this one is the side uh, with, 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 a, with a 45 degrees. So you, degree. get, yeah. you get the both. Yeah. And for all the points, for example, here, obviously, there are no buildings. But yeah, for example, here and here. Yeah. Yeah, then you have all of this. Here is just here is just uh, 99 points, and uh, for example, uh, for example, in your case, maybe this uh, this number of points may be 10,000 or or 100,000, and uh, then in that case, collecting this data may take uh, I don't know several minutes, 20 minutes or or more. Uh, I I run a test. Test run in this morning, and I collect uh, 10,000 pictures of Rome, city of Rome. It takes me 20 minutes. So this this should give you um, a feeling that how how long this process will take. Yeah. And uh, basically that's it. And one more thing to mention more about is what is what is the key, what is this key and secret. I can, for example, show my uh, Google Platform account that goes into credentials. For example, here here's the key I use for all the crawlers I show you. And uh, here is another thing called URL signing secret. You, you, you don't have to e exactly know what are these things, but just copy and paste them to the, uh, to the, to the notebook. So in principle, this one, this one should not be shown to anybody, and uh, this one is somehow public because it is directly attached at the end of your uh, URL address and and sent to the server, right? So, so in this case, because everyone can see this text and it could be easily used by other uh, other people without your permission, for example, then uh, this secret this secret guarantee that the other guys cannot use your uh, key directly because because uh, what this thing do is to attach a thing called a signature at the end of the at the end of your URL and this signature is generated based on the pre the previous part of this URL and this secret uh, uh, screen and because this one is not uh, is not public and the, and the generation process is based on algorithm called uh, hash and it's not re reversible, which means you cannot simply calculate this secret based on the signature, which makes your uh, uh, method much more safer. And uh, the difference, the difference attitude of uh, the difference, uh, and Google Google set uh, limitations for for different use of 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 the key and the secret. For example, if you only attach key without a signature, then the maximum uh, Limited per day is twenty five thousand uh, calls, which which is not a lot. You can you can run in, you can run out of out of it within twenty minutes. And if you attach a signature at the end of your calling, then uh, this limit is then this number is unlimited, which means you can collect as many data as you want per day. So that's why I highly recommend everybody attach your secret as well. And uh, yeah, I, I also explained it here. So mm, yeah, and if you if you attach the wrong uh, secret uh, a signature, <coughs> then the web page you will give you an error message. Yeah, and of course in your Google account you can also I'm not sh sure where, but for example you can set uh, the maximum allowed uh, number of calling. For example, for for the callings without without a signature, you can set it you can set this to a very low value so that so that in this case nobody else can use your API key because because they can they, they don't know how to generate a signature. Yeah. And yeah, that's it. That's that's basically what I'm going to show. Yeah. And uh, later we will distribute these files and uh, try to try to have them run in your computer so that we know what 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 would happen if something goes wrong or not mm -hmm. yeah.
Yeah, and uh, Paula will show you the crawlers for uh, Twitters and yes. and Instagram through Twitter, right? Good. So the only so I will also go fast because I would like to have some time with you, with each of the groups. So to go to start crawling the data you want. Okay, so <clears throat> in this case, what what I did here is instead of using this grid or the streets, I use this what I mentioned before, mm, these specific pictures of buildings. So I got I got the points of every commercial building in New York. And I, again, I I, I asked my API key to Twitter, and I start crawling all of these tweets. Um, one thing is that this takes longer because you are allowed to crawl for each point. You are allowed to crawl 89 points per 20 minutes, per, per half an hour. So it will, it's automatically doing it, but it will take some time. So then just leave it running, and then you will get all the tweets. And then if you go, if you run each of these cells until the end, you will get uh, all the images corresponding to to all the, the geo coordinates that you have. And I will show you. So for example, here, yep. these are all the pictures that are related with uh, New York and uh, yeah, what do I do next? Yeah, New York in all of these points of interest. And of course, they are some errors. some errors, but then since you can crawl a lot, these errors at some point will disappear because it goes into converge. But of course, this is, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At the end, you can wait. What does happen? Yeah, it's a lot of work, uh, lady. Yeah, but at the end, of course, you could do, delete the duplicates and just get a, a clean data set. But what, for, what was interesting is that you could actually start thinking a little bit how to get your data before getting old. So you start thinking, I should get only the data from these interesting points, or sh should I get all from all from all the city of New York, and then try to find patterns? But then, then this is this is this is how you should ask the thing. So then you have things about food. So this, I, how, how it is crawl is by asking a tag, which is food, and the city of New York, and you put this point. And of course, you will get a lot of pictures of food. Anyway, since the beginning, you said, just give me all the food. But if you ask anything else, just only the tag of New York, then you get every picture that is in New York. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's it. So um, now we ask you to group yourself, <laughs> to find your group partner. And we go around and start crawling the data with you.